Welcome to Read Your Comics. Today I'm looking at Incredible Hulk number 334. Okay, I'm back again looking at more Peter David on the Incredible Hulk. Still at the early part of his run. Still got McFarlane art. Unfortunately, still don't have McFarlane covers. Starting out, just jumping right into this cover. It, even though it's not McFarlane, I find this cover to be pretty good but not great you know we've got this this decaying looking character that the hulk is just punching his fist straight through and it doesn't seem to be hurting the character so some intrigue right off the bat so here's our mcfarlane art still on the inside and he gets to do something a little ghoulish this time we're kicking it off at a cemetery where this green corpse looking thing is crawling out of a grave and he's got like a mysterious uh, person he's meeting there um i can give away who it is right now but we'll, we'll just leave it a mystery for now <laughs> so we got peter david todd mcfarlane and jim sanders the third on inks jim sanders the third seems to do the bulk of these early issues and as I've already mentioned in some other episodes, I, I don't know that he gives us the best of McFarlane's pencils. Um, title of this issue is Grave Circumstances. Bruce Banner is waking up on the top of this like, you know, natural pillar where the Hulk has stranded him, hoping that he couldn't get back to Gamma Base in time. Um, that would be <laughs> pretty brutal for Bruce to be there all day long in the you know, hot Arizona sun just baking on the top of this thing. But, you know, you wouldn't think that the Hulk, I guess, thought if I put him up here, he won't be able to contact Gamma Base and get back. So I'll just leave him stranded for the day and then take back over at night. But along comes a helicopter and they get a little close and the wind knocks him off, but they're able to throw him a ladder and he climbs up in and they're like, all right, buddy, how'd you even get up there? And he's like, you wouldn't uh, believe me, you wouldn't believe it. So they take him back into town and he does, he is able to call Gamma Base. He talks to Doc Sampson and as he's, you know, on the phone with her at some like mechanic shop or something, there's like a bikini calendar up there and the girl reminds him of Betty. And he mentions about like how he's a terrible husband. Cut to Betty who's run off with Ramon and she's reminiscing about like at what point she was with him and stuff. And, you know, McFarlane's hair here on Betty. I guess McFarlane isn't really known for making the most attractive women. Although I always credit him with making like MJ, you know, extremely sexy, but um, this haircut on Betty, it's, it's more like early eighties mom than it is, you know, whatever her age is supposed to be at this point. I'm assuming she'd still be like in her twenties. At this point, maybe like 28 or so, but uh, that haircut, <laughs> that's something else. So she's with this Ramon guy who's allegedly her estranged husband. Of course, she's married to Bruce at this time, and she's run off with him because she's mad about uh, Bruce willingly turning himself back into the Hulk in order to help Rick Jones, who was a Hulk, and now he's been cured by the leader and they're just testing him out at Gamma Base to make sure all signs of the Hulk are gone, and they are. Bruce returns to Gamma Base. Oh, and this is the morgue. So in the last issue, we saw Rick return to Gamma Base in a uh, ambulance, and there was a dead body in it. And he's on the phone saying that the dead body is the guy he worked with and he's having to call his wife to say, Hey, we don't know what happened. Your husband was killed. He went to this military base to pick up a dead body, which was supposed to be general Ross. And the ambulance came back missing the body. It was going to pick up and he was killed. And a new corpse is brought in, but he's so stressed out about, about his friend slash coworker passing away or being murdered and having to tell his wife that he doesn't really take the time to look at this corpse. And that's that green hand we saw at the beginning coming out of the grave, uh, back at gamma, ba back at gamma base, we get a little levity of 
Um, this one scientist lady making some food that apparently isn't very good. And they're all kind of snickering about her food, not being very good. They like her, they're friends with her, but they obviously don't think she's a very good cook. Cause here's, here's Rick even over to the side while her back is turned, dumping it in the trash saying, please don't look, please don't look. <laughs> Bruce is finding out that Betty is gone. He's also addressing the Hulk busters who feel like now that there's no Hulk, they don't realize that he is turning into the Hulk again yet. And they're deciding what to do with themselves now that there's no Hulks to bust. Um, Bruce decides he needs to go find Betty, though. Uh, this is the Laricat who was injured during a Hulk busting training operation and his friend Saunders, not to be confused with the Inker, um, who has been injured. And they're still like pretty bitter at, at, about Bruce in, in the whole scheme of things that it's all Bruce's fault for ever creating a game of bomb and ever like releasing a Hulk that led to all of this pain and suffering of anyone that's encountered or run cross paths with him or the Hulk. Uh, where was it? Bruce, Bruce hops in a Jeep to go get, to go find Betty and Rick is in the Jeep waiting for him. And they do a little play on Hulk number one of Rick out on the, the Game of Bomb testing site. We go to this seedy looking hotel. Woman calls him. A, <laughs> it's like, yeah, we're, we know where that guy is. He's in this room with some bimbo. He's like, oh, it must not be Betty. She's not a bimbo. <laughs> so he knocks on the door and it is Betty in there. And so Bruce gets mad. Um, but he, he's mad, but he's calm at the same time. He's just like, look out, Betty, what's wrong with you? We're married, blah, blah, blah. She's like, you're not even being emotional. You found me with another man and you're not even worked up about it. And the Ramon guy hits him and, you know, kicks him, knocks him down and stuff. And you get this like, ooh, the Hulk is mad. The Hulk's inside. He knows what's going on. He wants to come out, but it's daytime, so he can't. Then Rick steps in and takes him out and points out that, like, uh, don't mess with somebody who was trained by Captain America. And all of this is, and then Betty just goes back with Bruce. So Bruce, she's like, okay, Bruce, I'll go back with you and leaves this guy behind <laughs> for the moment. And on the way out, she makes an impassioned plea for Bruce to show some emotion. Bruce, please act like, you know, you care about me, that I'm your wife and you want to be with me and blah, blah, blah. So he's like, let's get a room. And Rick is like, are you sure that's a good idea? Um, they make note of the time on there on the clock. And he's like, yep, I got so many hours until dark. <laughs> so he's renting the room by the hour to take Betty up and show, show her what kind of man he really is. Um, back at the morgue, guy's finally going to look at the dead body. Hand comes up, takes him out too. Um, Rick goes to get a drink while Bruce and Betty are having their time alone in the room. And they're still in the same hotel that she was just in with this other guy who I guess he's going to come to in a minute. And he's trying to keep track of time. He's getting a little nervous about the time. She's like, just come cuddle with me for a minute. And he's like, okay, I guess we got some time. But what he doesn't realize is up here, Rick is already noticing it's getting a little dark. And he's like, but it's only whatever time it was, five o'clock or whatever. And he's like, yeah, don't you watch the news? The time changed the other day. And so Bruce, having been going through the Hulk transformations, has lost track of that, I'm sure. And he thinks he's got an hour left, but it's really starting to get dark already. He's cuddling with Betty. We see these panels of his hand changing and her eye going from, like, you know, peaceful uh, cuddling to all of a sudden she's in pain with a tear going out of her eyes. This is some McFarlane-ness here. I think I think this is a good uh, transformation scene for not actually showing the entire Hulk. Um, Rick's trying to come up there to stop him, you know, because he knows what's going on now, and he breaks down the door. That's how cheap the hotel room is. And there's already a big hole in the side. And it's hard to see in this wreckage of the bed. You can kind of see Betty's arm right there. That's a coloring issue, but you can see her arm right there. So when he was holding her and transforming, it messed Betty up 
pretty bad on accident. And the Hulk even is like saying, your timing stinks, Banner. Betty could have been killed. As it is, I hope she's all right. But why should I care about her? What are you putting in my head, Banner? And that's further demonstrating how the Hulk and Banner are, they can affect each other in subtle ways, at least depending on uh, the level of the moon at this point. And that's something that I think is not really ever been demonstrated other than when Banner had complete control of the Hulk, but like you never really saw that Banner was influencing what the Hulk was doing. The Hulk always thought Banner was like a completely different person altogether, but the Gray Hulk knows that he changes back and forth. So he's, and he feels weak all of a sudden as he's like jumping. He feels weak in the, in the air and he notices it's coming from this like little dune buggy. So he does a thunderclap to keep its distance. And here's our, here's our corpse, our corpse guy. And he's like, you can call me Ishmael or Half-Life, whichever you prefer. So he's half alive, half dead. And like the Hulk, he only, he's basically, he's dead during the day, but in, at night he, uh, he comes to life, which makes me think, did that timing of the hand happen? Yeah, pretty much. I guess it did. You see, the corpse wakes up and grabs him about the same time that Rick is uh, noticing it's getting dark. And the Hulk is changing. Although, a little, little bit of a time discrepancy there. Um, it seems like maybe 10, 15 minutes passed before Rick got back up there. I don't know how close he was to, to the hotel to get back up for the Hulk transformation. Anyway, so this Half-Life character is able to kind of drain off some of the uh, gamma from the Hulk, and it's making the Hulk weak. So he can't. it's hard for the Hulk to just straight up fight him because it, it, he is feeling like... It's like kryptonite to Superman in a way. <laughs> um, that's a pretty good vertical panel right there. You're seeing the McFarlane's, McFarlane-isms in the Hulk's face, just a little bit each issue. We're getting a little bit more. Uh, this Half-Life character, too, I mean, look at, that's hard to see, but the printing of this era is so, I mean, look at that ghoulish, zombie-ish face. Clings to the Hulk. And the Hulk like rips him off of him, <laughs> but his legs and arms are stuck. <laughs> Snap, flings him off, takes his arms and legs. I think it's funny how they always show like, I guess so you can see it better in like small size, little energy clings, or maybe that's showing that it's still kind of siphoning a little bit. He pulls his arms and legs off and throws them like a mile in each direction. But the most important thing we get out of this little encounter is he's saying that how he was um, affected, caught in the gamma bomb blast, and that's what has made him this half alive, half dead thing that comes out at night. Um, he's been found in several cities, and they always take him to the morgue, and then he comes back, and um, so the Hulk starts wondering, like, well, you and and then there were these like mutated creatures called the outcasts i think he's like you all and uh who all like how many living things were out there that were caught in that game of blast thinking it was the same one as him and he was like uh new mexico no no this was in colorado last year last year last year so now the hulk is really like confused before we move on from this page, again, we're getting some solid McFarlane-isms here. Seeing more like the little line noodling and stuff. Either S Sanders is getting better at inking McFarlane's pencils, or McFarlane is adding a little bit more. Um, there's a, He was probably doing double duty at this time, still finishing up some of his DC work. Um, but... Uh, so some of, some of these early issues may not be fully penciled like he would have done had it been the only thing he was working on. 
but maybe he was finishing up and like adding a little more detail. He definitely likes it when he gets these close up shots. I'm noticing it more and more. Um, like when, even when it's just like his eyes or something. That's a great one there of him. Let's look at him again. Let's pull it up close again. We can really get a good look at him. I mean, that's a good decaying looking corpse creature. So Half-Life tells him that he was caught in a game of bomb just last year. And the Hulk's like, what? There are no more game of bombs, uh, banners, you know, uh, plans for them were destroyed and obviously not. So that's setting the stage for a bigger plot going on. Um, the Hulk jumps off and puts him in a cave and there's nothing the Hulk and there's nothing Banner can do. He's trapped in a cave. And here comes the the buzzards because Half-Life is dead in the day, just as his arms are like getting back to him <laughs> or almost got back to him. But it's daytime now, so he's just going to lay there inert. And you think, well, is that the last you see of, of, of the Half-Life character? We're only getting a letters page every couple of issues. I, I should really read some and see what people are saying about what Peter David's doing at this point. Usually I just kind of scan to see if there's any names that go on to be comic creators. And in this case, there was not. So that's it for this one. Uh, again, I'm seeing more development in both McFarland's art and what Peter David is wanting to do. He's Now he has officially wrapped up the Hulk Rick storyline. It is done. He has no Hulk left in him. Um, they've said it plain as day in here. We're done with that. Uh, the Hulk busters are starting to disband because they don't think there's a Hulk to bust. Um, of course, we know there is. Are they going to find out about that? Are they going to like have to um, come to terms that they're still have to be around to bust the Hulk? Or are we starting to move away from that? That's the direction we're heading. Overall, though, I, I still think the, the pace of the, what Peter David is building so far is moving along at a nice rate. We're getting kind of self-contained single issues, but we are moving towards a bigger plot. So that's all I got for this one. Until next time, read your comics. <laughs>